do you want to hex every bitch that crosses your path? Well, that was me, literally this morning. No, I kid, I kid, I kid. I had coffee and then I was fine. But before I did any shadow work to tame that inner demon, that she-beast, the Krakenator, before I did any of that work, I would have pretty bad reactions to things. I would go into defense mode. I'd come out swinging. I would tear people down with my vicious Gemini wit. But now I'm a lot better thanks to shadow work and doing a fuck ton of it. So I wanted to share with you how I do shadow work. So what is the shadow exactly? Now, the shadow was a term coined by Carl Jung. Many of you know who Carl Jung is. If this ain't a history lesson, go Google it or pick up one of Carl's many books or books on the shadow. Basically, the shadow is those parts of ourselves that we would like to hide, whether we're hiding them from ourselves we're not acknowledging that we are in fact that way, that we have those deep, dark thoughts, that we have those desires that may be taboo or that we don't want to voice. They are the parts of ourselves that we're trying to hide from other people. It is a mask that we may put on in certain situations to act a certain way. It is anything that makes us feel uncomfortable. It's also something that we feed through fear and often through hurt and trauma and when we hold on to that, that's when our shadow side begins to grow more and more. So what is shadow work? Shadow work is when you make the conscious decision to identify, explore, discover, acknowledge, and integrate those parts of yourself that you wanna hide into your being. They're no longer in the driver's seat of your life, or you're not making decisions from a place of fear. So why would you do shadow work? So you would do shadow work because you don't want that thing to grow into something that is taking control of your choices. There is this really fun thing that we do as humans where whatever we feed, we grow. So if you're feeding your shadow all the time by suppressing it, by saying it's not there, by ignoring it, by shutting it out, by pretending to yourself and other people that these things don't exist, you're growing it, you're making the beast hungry and you are feeding it as much as it wants. The other key phrase that I've heard through my shadow work that I really think sums it up is that you do shadow work so you don't bleed on the people who didn't cut you. It's a way to get rid of generational wounds, it's a way to make sure the next generation is not going to carry on a legacy of pain and trauma and really bad habits. So how can you benefit from this sometimes really <laughs> painful, hard, lifelong work. Well, it's about living in harmony and integrating yourself. So you are knowing yourself, you're being yourself, you're being authentic, and you are acknowledging the parts of yourself that you may not necessarily love, but it deserves love all the same. It's about accepting yourself and facilitating the healing processes throughout your life. One of the big things that I have found to be extremely useful with shadow work is breaking generational trauma, ancestral trauma, so that I'm breaking cycles that my past family has really, you know, they've done a good number on some of the beliefs that have been carried down through my family and some of the very bad habits and addictions as well. And I have done a lot of work around making sure that stops with me. Shadow work can bring up some heavy, heavy stuff and I do not recommend that you do this alone. I recommend that you work with a counselor or a therapist or a coach, especially one that is qualified and has experience with shadow work, and that you start with something small and then you go from there. So here are the things that I have done and do regularly for my own shadow practice. The first thing I do for my shadow work is something that I've actually been doing since I was 11 years old, and that is journaling. I have got a huge storage box in my storage space full of journals that I've written in all the way through my life. There's travel journals, there's journals for everyday sort of musings. There's a lot of angst. I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of angst. There's a lot of angst and really wanting to be married to a Backstreet Boy in my high school ones. I'm just saying it's a bit cringe word to go and read it. Let's just say your priorities shift when you become a fully grown up adult. But journaling is one great way to get your mind out of this loop, uh, to get things off your chest uh, with no judgment. You can just flow and you can write, you can journal, you can doodle, you can 
paint, you can do whatever you want to get it out, but this is the first step to learning how to do shadow work is to express yourself in a way that is comfortable. And you know what, you can even get these suckers with a lock and you can also just type one online, like find a journaling app online and use that. The second thing that I do on the regular for my shadow work is tarot readings. Now, duh. <laughs> That feels like something that is very second nature to me. I do it all the time. And the tarot is another way to use those universal archetypes that Jung also talks about to identify ways that you are stuck, that you are maybe self-sabotaging. All those things can come up if you're asking the right questions with the tarot. And I always check in when I'm doing shadow work or I'm really stuck on something. I won't read myself. I will go to one of my colleagues or someone that I trust and get a tarot reading from them. Because bet your bottom dollar, I'm more likely to be biased when it comes to accessing and identifying my shadow. Somebody else is gonna be much better at getting to the heart of the matter because I'm not getting in my own way. So take that tip from me. The third one is therapy. Yeah, done a lot of that, had a lot of therapists, done a lot of talking and it has been really good. It's been extraordinarily life-changing. I haven't loved all of my counselors or therapists. I've had a few, some of them because I changed, you know, I moved country, but definitely it's been very, very helpful in having a safe space to talk, to kind of go through a few things and to get tools to help me through difficult situations or breaking cycles and identifying what's actually going on and what I could have the opportunity to change. But therapy, can't recommend it enough. The fourth one is one that I have got to say has confronted me on the daily more than anything else, and that is having a accountability partner. One of my accountability partners is my sister. She a Capricorn, and let's say she's about as subtle as a sledgehammer. So if I'm doing something that is a reaction to trauma or something that is something we've been programmed through childhood, um, things that come from that shadow side, the side that I kind of find ugly, I'm gonna get called out on it. And I remember <laughs> this wasn't my sister, but a elder in the a high priestess in the pagan community i did something a little bit bitchy <laughs> me never i'm an angel in a facebook group to somebody else and she literally texted me the second i posted it on the facebook group she's like ethany take it down you know what you did not cool being called that but like i was like yeah you're right like i didn't fight with her i was like yeah you're right i was being a bitch like having someone who's an accountability partner is great but having an accountability partner is something that you should try and get once you've got some tools to work through your shadow stuff because someone just going hey you've been a dick is not going to be helpful if you don't know how to unpack that separate yourself from the behavior look at where maybe that behavior's come from how that's made you feel if you don't know how to work with all that then that just feels like criticism and you're going to get a really bad reaction from that. You're going to feel like shit. So definitely look at an accountability partner, maybe once you've done a bit more work on your shadow, but it is a really powerful tool if you have the right accountability partner. The fifth one is a doozy and it's one that I mentioned before that myself and my sisters are working on and that is breaking ancestral cycles. We all have ancestral trauma and believe me, I'm pretty sure there's no one on this planet that doesn't have something that has been passed down from their family that no longer fits our culture, our way of life, the way we want to live and who we are deep, deep down. And my ancestral trauma, my ancestral cycles are going to be completely different to somebody else's. It's not about, oh my God, my shadow is like so much more bigger than yours. It's about what you need to heal. And that I've done through some therapy, through talking very openly with my family, calling out my family, all those things of no longer sweeping things under the rug and accepting them for the way they were or how it was has been a big game changer. Again, something that I would recommend to do once you've done a little bit more shadow work and you've got some tools to help you kind of process that. Six is reading. Uh, I know that's gonna be like, oh crap, I hate homework, but I love reading and this is a really wonderful book it's called meeting the shadow and i completely recommend it now there's even a quote on the back here from jung one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light but by making the darkness conscious and that is really fantastic this has just got 
so much in here that you're going to be able to work with and honestly there's just some really great little snippets it kind of reminds me of the women who run with wolves where you can sort of read one little part so like this one is six the realization of the shadow in dreams and it's written by one person and it's only a couple of pages so you could like read that journal about it reflect on it and really process it in small bits and so this is why i i love this book and i believe this is one that kellyanne maddox actually recommended in one of her uh, videos and I went out and got it and I'm really glad I did but reading about archetypes and trauma and I've got lots of books on trauma and healing relationships and I did developmental psychology and psychology at university all of those things are going to help you when it comes to understanding yourself uh, humans behaviors attachment styles all that kind of stuff if you're into reading and you know this Ravenclaw is it's a great place to start the seventh shadow work tool i recommend is the muses of tarot and yes this is a plug but also because this deck and book is meant to be used as a practical way of accessing light and shadow in different archetypes and aspects of our lives so You've got the muse of money. And let me tell you, the muse money laughs of fortune and prosperity and wealth. Who doesn't have something around the shadow when it comes to that? Who hasn't had a negative experience with money? Who hasn't had a negative experience with capitalism? So all those things can be accessed, worked with, worked through with the muses of tarot. And that's for every single one of the 13 divine muses. So this is a workbook and a deck that's gonna help you work through a lot of shadow stuff. And last but not least, and a certainly one that I recommend is Benabel Wen's Tarot Shadow Work course. This is just the workbook. Yeah, just the workbook. It massive. I use the Spirit Keepers Tarot for this and a Rider Waite Smith. I will pop a link below where you can go and support her and get this, this uh, course. It's amazing. <laughs> so if you want to do some big old shadow work, go and grab this course. It's going to lead you through um, all of it through Benabel's lens and through the tarot. And you know, those are two things that I love. I love shadow work, I love tarot, I love Benabel. Fantastic. There's also video content as well. So it's not just a workbook. How do you integrate your shadow and what shadow work do you do? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, share with your shadow love friends, and I'll see you all next time.